If you've been thinking about buying one of these big keyboard controllers for your GameCube, Wii, Wii U, Switch, or PC, keep watching because this video is going to help you decide if this long boy is right for you. So to provide some quick context on this thing, I purchased this ASCII GameCube keyboard controller back in 2018 from eBay, and I made a short unboxing video where I also tested the controller on my GameCube hardware to confirm that it worked and to see how it felt to play a game with it. You can click the card up here to watch that video, but to summarize for those who aren't familiar with this particular device, it was designed exclusively for Fantasy Star Online Episode 1 and 2, an online action role-playing game from the keyboard layout on this kooky controller was designed to make it super easy for people playing that game to be able to control things as well as type without having to switch input devices. In the video that I made, I confirmed that the regular controller functionality works fine on standard GameCube games, and the controller is actually very comfortable to use. It feels sort of like playing with a longer corded Wii U gamepad. Nevertheless, this is a really unique item, and people have asked a lot of great questions about the scope of this controller's usability that I didn't address back then. That's why today we're going to put this keyboard controller to the test on some more modern hardware to see what it can do. Let's start with the GameCube's successor, the Wii. For GameCube fans, the original Nintendo Wii hardware was immediately appealing back in 2006 because it had native backwards compatibility with the GameCube game library, memory cards, and controllers. If you've got a Wii with model number RVL-001, you'll have full GameCube support, making playing games with the GameCube keyboard controller as simple as plugging the connection cables directly into the ports on the top. Just be aware that later revisions of the Wii, model RVL-101, and the Wii Mini, model RVL-201, do not have these ports or any GameCube support. The Wii U is where the GameCube controller adapter becomes essential to use any GameCube controller. You've got to connect the adapter to the Wii U's USB ports, plug the controller into the adapter, and understand that, per Nintendo's website, Super Smash Bros. for Wii U is the only software that supports any GameCube controller inputs. Thankfully, Nintendo makes things better for us with the Switch. The adapter and any GameCube controller work just as you'd expect once they're connected to the Switch's dock. The best part, however, is that you can actually use your GameCube controller to navigate the Switch menus and play games as soon as it's connected. Unfortunately, the Switch only recognizes GameCube controllers as generic USB pads, so despite Nintendo's addition of button remapping in system software version 10.0, you're not able to customize your GameCube inputs. Just something to remember in case you're playing a game and realize that you can't accomplish something you could perform on Joy-Cons or a Switch Pro controller. Quick pause and just a real quick question for you guys. Has this video been helpful so far? If so, let me know with a comment below that says GameCube 2020 or GameCuberty. Whatever you want. Literally whatever you want. Is the food too spicy for you? I can eat spicy food every day. Let's get back to the video. Lastly, I also got this question from Adam Stuffs about whether the keyboard controller will work with the Wii U controller adapter on PC. When I first tried connecting the adapter, it was recognized as a generic USB item that my computer wasn't ready to use. After googling around a little, I found a guide from user Jack Sorrell that helped me find the missing driver I needed for my Windows laptop. After that, I booted up Dolphin, set each controller port to use the GameCube adapter as shown, and I was off to the races. Literally. Each game I've played on PC so far has worked like a charm, and I haven't run into any input lag or compatibility issues. As with anything, your mileage may vary depending on the computer you're using, your controller connection, so many variables. Now, I should mention that I still do not own a physical copy of Fantasy Star Online Episode 1 and 2, nor have I attempted to play the game on my computer. That said, I have looked around the internet a little, and it appears that the most dedicated PSO fans can indeed still access online servers for this game and continue to play with people online. Best of all, a website called rofnet.net sells an adapter that, as of version 3.6, now offers full keyboard support for controllers like this one to interface with PCs. So, in summary, this controller will work on PC so long as you have an adapter and the correct driver installed to support it. To get the keyboard to work with PSO seems to require a more boutique solution than this generic Keylux adapter provides, however. I've included links in the description below to rofnet.net, that Jack Sorrell video, and other articles for you to read if you're curious to learn more. Now that we've gone through each of these options, I want to ask, did this video help you or was it at least interesting and do you plan to pick up one of these weird controllers eventually? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, a thumbs down if you didn't, 
and consider subscribing so you can tune in to all new videos here on Cross Shop. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and play heavy.